This is Twitter. All right. Well, let's take a quick look here at On One Photo Run. This is version 2022 that we're looking at today. I'm going to give you like the super quick tour of everything. We won't go super deep. You can always get the trial on the website. Give it a shot yourself. So I'm going to start off here in the browse module. This is where you're going to keep track of your photos. Over here on the left, on the top hand side, you're going to see a tab for my catalogs or for browse or for presets. If I click on the browse tab, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to see all of my local drives over here on the left and that are mounted. I could just navigate them like I would in any old browser. So it's very simple just to navigate from folder to folder. You don't have to go through and catalog your work in order to see it. Now you can, if you want to, and that's what I like to do. I'll create a catalog. The benefit of creating a catalog folder, there's a bunch. The first one is I don't have to navigate through all those darn trees to find the place where I keep my photos, but it also will watch that folder for me automatically in the background. So any folders that are added or removed or photos that are added or changed, it'll keep track of all of that, generates previews of them. So they're faster to take a look at those photos. And it also allows me to do searching across multiple folders or multiple drives. It's got a very powerful database that sits behind it that makes searching really easy. So you can also create albums, which are kind of your lists of photos from all sorts of places. Think of it like a post-it note with a list of files that you want to keep track of. And you can also create what are called smart albums, which are essentially a saved search. Like I mentioned, the search in this is crazy powerful. If I just bring up the search dialog here, you can see where I can search any of my catalog folders or any of my uh, other locations where I keep photos. And I had can search just about any field that I could ever imagine and have very uh, granular controls over what I'm actually searching for. And then I can save those as a smart app to make it easy to find. So let's say I want to go find all of my favorite flower pictures. So I've already created a smart album for that. I can click on it. Oops, I guess I should actually put some in there, which I hadn't yet. You'll mm -hmm. have to edit that part out because I hadn't actually added the keywords for it. It's all right. Like I can that? snip it out. Yeah. Uh, there's several different views for viewing your photos. So right now, you'll notice that I'm actually looking at folders. One of the cool things about Photo Raw is you actually see the folders and not just the images. You'll see them together. And if you have them in a mixed environment, you'll see both. And then if I double click on a folder, it'll dive inside and I'll see the photos that live inside of that folder. And I can view those in a thumbnail view or I can go into a detailed view where I see a larger version and I can even bring up a film strip that makes it easy to go through photos and I can compare multiple photos at the same time as well. Let's actually go to a shoot where I have multiple photos where I might want to look at them together here. Here's a senior shoot and let's say I've got several similar photos that I want to compare. I can just grab all of those, go into the compare tool and I can view all of them and I can zoom and pan and match those all at the same time, making it really easy to go through and find out which one is the sharpest or which one's the best. And if there's ones I don't like, I can simply hit the slash key to throw it out of my selection and reduce my selection down to just the ones that are my favorites. And then from those favorites, I could easily pick the one that I want to go edit, or I could select all of them. And I could add metadata changes to all of them, like stars or ratings or hearts, however I keep track of my photos. Over on the right-hand side, you'll notice it keeps track of all of your metadata about a photo. At the top, it'll give you your exit information. And if I add my own metadata, like keywords or descriptions or anything into the IPTC metadata fields, those will show up in here and are searchable in the database as well. Plus, there's a very flexible keyword list where I can simply drag and drop keywords to assign keywords on top of photos. All right, let's jump in and actually show you guys a little bit about develop. Develop's where you actually go in and you actually process and work on your photos instead. So. I'm just going to grab a raw photo here and I'll click on edit. So this will switch from browse over to edit, opened up that raw photo and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can take a look at this guy up close. Ooh, this one's pretty noisy. This is actually a shot at 5,000 ISO. So one of the first things I want to do is go in and reduce a little bit of the noise and then we'll dig in and talk about some of those basic raw adjustments. You notice over here on the left are all of my presets. It comes with over 300 different presets to have get you started on making adjustments to your photos. I'm gonna tuck those away here to give us a little bit more room to work. Over on the right-hand side, obviously you see the info that we were just looking at. I can also view a histogram. I can view my history and create snapshots of my edits in here as well. There's a layers section. As I mentioned, one of the cool things about Photo is you can actually create multi-layered files that still have the original raw files in them and do non-destructive editing on a layer by layer basis. It's pretty cool. It's the only app that really lets you do that. 
I'm going to roll up the layers now and let's focus here on the develop tab. This is where all the basic raw adjustments lives, things like exposure and contrast highlights and shadows, white balance, and down here is the noise and sharpening section. I'm going to jump down here because I want to show you guys no noise AI. This is our AI based noise reduction. I'm going to select this. It's going to go out. It's going to actually take the original raw photo. It's going to re debar it and basically start from scratch and do the noise reduction on the raw file. So you can see Jeez. that's the after results. That's the before. It moves a little bit because I have lens correction turned on as well. So the mm -hmm. lens correction is not shown on the left-hand side. So you can kind of see before you see all that noise and after with no noise applied. Wow. There we go. I'm just going to apply that here. And then up in the tone and color section, that's where all of my classic raw processing adjustments would live. I'm just going to use our AI auto. This actually just analyzes the photo and does what it thinks is the right automatic adjustment for me. So I don't have to go through and figure out how to adjust all of those sliders. But the cool thing we do is we give you the ability to tone that back. So oftentimes, whenever you have an AI adjustment or an automatic adjustment, it tends to go a little further than you like. We always give you the ability to tone that back. So I can just grab this auto amount slider. I can dial in just the amount of auto that I actually like. There That's we go. gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. You, you had me at the noise reduction, Dan. So <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty handy. It's pretty handy. Uh, then under effects, this is actually what I think is the, the heart of photo raw is the part that I use the most. It's where all the creativity comes in is here inside of effects. Effects gives you a library of about 30 different filters that you can preview and stack on top of each other, control how they blend. It's really like the toolkit for uh, your creativity in here. And if you're, you know, you're used to putting filters on your lens, think of it the same way. This would be like you put a polarizer and a warming filter and then maybe, you know, a vignette. Uh, gobo on top of it same thing just done all digitally in here mm -hmm. now you can go through and pick these all manually and adjust them manually but what most people do is they start off with one of those presets because as i mentioned it comes with tons of awesome presets built in let's do oh let's do a, a black and white for this one so i'll come in here i'm going to go to the modern black and white category and it gives me little thumbnails of each of those presets those thumbnails are a little small though aren't they well i'm just going to click this little button right here called the quick view browser this gives me a larger view of those presets. I can even make it bigger. Then I just kind of go through and pick one that I like for my photo. <laughs> I kind of like that dark moody one right there. Mm -hmm. So I'll just select that. It adds that preset on. I could tone that preset back simply just by using this little fade slider on each preset. Or I can go over to the right-hand side. And I can see all of the filters that were added to create that look. I'm just going to turn these off one at a time so we can kind of see what it did. First thing it did is it added a vignette at the bottom, then it used the tone enhancer to increase the contrast a little bit, added a little bit of a rich glow, and then converted it to black and white. And I can adjust any of those in the stack, mask on them, delete any of them. So let's say I think that glow is a little strong. I could just grab the glow, and I could just dial back that glow amount. And because this is all done in the GPU, even though I've got a very deep stack of all the stuff that I've done, starting with the original photo with no noise at the bottom, all basic adjustments I did and develop, and then all the effects I apply on top. So I make adjustments in my stack at all re-renders instantly and like butter, as they say. So I can just yeah. dial in just and what I, I want. And I'm assuming I can save these. If I if I make a tweak to a preset, I can mm -hmm. save that yeah. as my own and reuse that, right? Yep. You can save it as a preset and because it's non-destructive, I can go back and re-edit any of this anytime. I can even synchronize it across multiple photos. So I could bring up my film strip here and I could say, well, you know, I like the settings on this photo. Maybe I want to apply it to this uh, Eagle photo as well. I can just shift click so that it's become selected, hit the sync button, and then I can control what settings from this photo get applied to the other photo. So I'm just gonna apply everything to it. Boop, and now the settings from this photo are applied over here. And if I move to this photo, it's gonna get the exact same operations applied to it. Nice. Just like that. Nice. Hmm. Then of course I can print it, share it, scale it, whatever I need to do to get that photo out to a client. So a lot of times people will go through export. Export is really one of the handiest tools in here. There's a very powerful export tool where you can control how it's named, even at the tokenized level. So I can actually have it add naming bits based on date or time or metadata. I can control where it's placed. I can have it generate subfolders based on metadata the same way I can send it to another application when I'm done. I can even run a script if I wanted to have it upload to my FTP server, for example. I 
control a file type, I can resize, I can sharpen, I control what metadata is put in, I can even add watermarks to it. And I can save all those as presets and I can even run multiple export presets at the same time. So I could have one preset that makes a JPEG for my website, and one that makes a TIFF to go to the printer. I could turn both those presets on, hit the export button, and it would do both at the same time. So crazy powerful export tool built in. That's and if incredible. I wanted to make a localized adjustment, any of these filters I've added have, have masks associated, bleh, associated with them. You notice there's a little mask icon right here. Mm -hmm. If I click on that mask, there's all the masking options and I can use any of the powerful masking tools over here on the left to manipulate that. So if I wanted to remove something or not, I don't really want to change the black and white, that would be silly, but let's go back down to maybe that glow. And let's say I want to take the glow off of the tree so I can just grab that glow filter and I'll click on the mask. It's automatically selected a brush for me. I'm just gonna turn the feather up so I have a softer brush and then I can just paint right here on the tree and now it's gonna paint off the glow just off the tree if I wanted to. Wow. So it just creates a normal mask. I can then go back and I can control the density of that mask. If I have O key, you can actually see what this mask will look like here. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Zoom eats our mask preview right now. So there's a bug in Zoom where it uh, eats the uh, the preview mode. So it's there, but you can't see it. So thank oh, you, OpenGL. Yeah. yeah, so I'll have to edit that little part out. Yep, but I will. You, know, you can go that. in and uh, control everything about every filter, how they blend and apply with each other. There's blending options between filters. So I can control how strong it is, what blending mode it uses. I can protect certain color ranges, tonal ranges, you name it. It's just crazy how configurable and how powerful it is. Wow. Now, Dan, where, where are you seeing this live? So, because I see a whole workflow here, right? I see an ingest, edit, noise reduction, tweak, preset, final image ready to go to deliver to the client output done rinse and repeat move to the next image is this is this where does this sit in my workflow but then in, in the export i saw you there was a lightroom classic as a destination that i could mm -hmm. send the the file to where do you see the this this piece of software sitting in my stack so one thing i've learned over the years is that no photographers two photographers workflows are the same they all yeah. build their own workflows so photo raw is built to be very versatile it could be everything for you it has import it has tethered shooting you can get your photos into it, you can organize them, you can edit them, print them, share them, export them, do everything with it by itself. But we have users who use it a lot of different ways. Some people love browse, but they don't do their editing in it. So they'll still send their editing off to Photoshop. So you can use Photoshop or any other app as an external editor. You can also here inside of edit, you can actually load any Photoshop plugin and you can send a layer out to a Photoshop plugin. So if I happen to love a certain Photoshop plugin, I can access my Photoshop plugins from right here inside of that end. Oh, or, that's interesting. So I could send yeah. things off to say, Imagenomic Portraiture if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and will it round trip out of that back into? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep, so it'll host Photoshop plugins. Uh, we have a lot of people who like it just because of its fast browsing capability. They'll just use it like they would a photo mechanic to do their importing and culling and do their rating and keywording. It's all stored as platform uh, independent XMP and then they'll send it to Lightroom because that's where they want to do their raw processing. So really you can use any or all of it depending on how you want your workflow to work. That is really cool. All right, and that's this is out now, right? On One Photo Raw 2022 mm -hmm. is out now. Yeah. Uh, here, let me put, a, put you on the spot. What's an On One Photo Raw 2023? <laughs> uh, that's a good question that was far enough away i can't i can't give away too many secrets go ahead and launch uh, the beta i won't tell anybody go ahead and launch yeah. it it's cool <laughs> yeah so obviously you know uh with resize coming out resize yeah. will be part of a free update for photo raw 2022 and anybody who buys 23 you will get you know the new resize technology built in with that as well uh i think if you, you know you, we talked a little earlier about masking being very important to us and making masking as simple as we can, I'm pretty yep. sure you'll see something in that vein for the fall as well. Excellent. Yeah. Wow. All right. This is crazy. This is crazy. Thanks for showing this. This is deep. Yeah, you bet. This yeah. is deep. This is this is not just a plugin. This is not a plugin. Period. This is this is a workflow standalone application that uh, can do some pretty amazing things. That noise reduction was ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> that yeah. that was I was looking for like some detail 
you know, mashed potatoing in there. And I saw very little, if any, you know, yeah. even on a shot like this, you know, there was still detail in the bird's wings and the necks, the whole nine yards. Very good. And of course, in the high frequency areas, like the branches that they're standing on, uh, mm -hmm. it did not destroy those at all. So that's, uh, all. that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Now here we did it, you know, obviously in photo ROM and, you know, I love it when people use it, use it the way that I do as kind of the standalone for everything, but we also provide, a lot of these core technologies that you see here as plugins. So if you're a Photoshop user or Lightroom user, Capture One user, you can still use a lot of these technologies directly inside of those applications as well. So like the no noise, the noise reduction we just looked at, you could use as plugins to those doing our portrait retouching, which is amazing and automatic. You don't have to lift a brush at all to do portrait retouching. You can use that in all of those places as well. The power of all these filters you see inside of effects, you can use those in all of those apps as a plugin as well. So. That's Sorry. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But then they're all inside of on one photo raw 2022, all of them. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. right here. So if you want to do, if you want all that superpower in one kind of like me, I, I want everything in one kind of cohesive spot. And then if I need to go out to other places for some specialty work, I can do that, which it sounds like I can round trip and, and do that. But I want to, mm -hmm. I want to do as much as possible in one area where I get my workflow kind of dialed in and nailed. And that's, that's kind of what you showed here. That's fantastic. Yeah. Very cool. Anything else? I think that's it. Like I said, best thing you do is go out and give it a shot. Give it a try. So I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with what you can accomplish. This is Twitter.